Uh, I'm Jigna Gandhi. I'm a senior solution architect at AWS and uh, I work with AWS and support my fintech customers in the North America region. Uh, my role has provided me very unique insights into some of the challenges that are faced by many of the organization, especially in the modern cybersecurity space. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can leverage generative AI uh, to offer those transformative solutions. Specifically, we'll be focusing on one use case, how you can use generative AI to uh, automate the res security response runbook creation. So let's dive in. Okay, so just want to talk a little bit on the agenda, what we are going to be talking about in the next 15-20 uh, minutes. Um, first, we'll start by uh, talking a little bit about what are the common challenges that are faced with security auditing. These challenges often include uh, time-consuming manual process, scalability, and you know inability to keep up to date with the recent threats. Uh, then we'll talk about how generative AI can come into the picture and help you automate some of this stuff. Uh, then we'll go into what exactly is automated security response runbook. Many organizations refer to it as incident response playbook or something like that. But we'll talk about how generative AI can you know, help you to uh, generate this automatically. Then we'll shift the focus a little bit into architecture. So going over the technical aspect, how you will implement this in your real uh, environment. Uh, we'll talk about what are the different components, how the integration will work together, and uh, some of the best practices when you implement this in your, uh, in, in your environment. And in the end, we'll talk about a real life example. Uh, I'll show you like, you know, taking a security issue and how exactly it will generate a runbook for you. So let's dive in. Okay. So let's first talk about what are the common challenges that many of the organization face. Uh, first up, we have the problem of uh, dealing with lots of lots of complicated logs. We have piles of data. It's slow. It's, it's very easy to miss things. To do that and to you know make some progress on that, you sometimes refer to a lot of advanced tools to find those patterns, which obviously gives additional cost. But at the same time, uh, you might not be able to look for specific events that you want. The another thing is it also lacks organization specific instructions. It's very generic, it's very you know, textbook like information, but you need something which is specific to your company, right? So for example, if there is an issue on an application that you're trying to handle, the very first thing you will do is put a maintenance page, but does that step mention anywhere in the run books? No, because that's, that's what your company or your organization follows. The third, uh, sorry, the fourth uh, challenge that we normally see is the additional research to mitigate some of those issues. Uh, sometimes we have so many different tools, third party integrations, and if you want to solve a problem, you have to research in all of them, find out the answer, and then uh, decide like, you know, what exactly you want to do. And then, obviously, the potential human errors. Uh, we all know that mistakes do happen. Uh, there can be some steps which can be missed. So, in order to avoid that, it's very important that we take care into uh, consideration. Um, so let's switch a little bit on like how generative AI can help. Oftentimes we think that generative AI is just for data science teams. It is just for creating chatbots. It's a Q&A kind of a thing. But that's not it. It has a much more potential and much more power that can help any of the other teams as well. So in this example, obviously, we are talking about security teams. Uh, security teams are responsible for creating automated uh, reports, vulnerability reports, uh, security finding reports, traffic reports. Uh, obviously, you can use uh, generative AI to automate some of those stuff. Uh, then we have uh, simulating issue scenarios. So for example, you want to make sure that your systems are capable and resilient enough to tackle any of the issues that might come. So it's being more proactive. Like, for example, developers have unit test cases, right? So security teams have uh, failover testing and things like that. Then we have um, anomaly detection, uh, recognizing what are the patterns with the normal behavior and comparing that with some unusual behavior so that you can detect th threats. Um, then we have security policy generation. So uh, obviously, we have, you know, if we want to you know, restrict our regions or uh, we want to make sure that our employees are just creating resources in one particular region. You want to create a service control policy. You can 
leverage generative AI to create those templates, to create those policies for you, which you can easily leverage when you want to uh, make the changes. Um, focusing in this session, I want to uh, talk a little, little bit about what exactly is security response runbook. It's basically step-by-step -step instructions that the security professionals follow in order to mitigate any of the issues. First, it will talk about what is the incident type, what is the severity, what are the set of policies and procedures that you want to handle. Uh, sometimes it is technical, like a code sample. Sometimes it is very generic in a textual form. So it's, it's a combination of both in the end when you generate the final output. And the most important is dynamically update that to reflect the changes. So if you are solving a problem, you're not just solving a problem on the technical side, but you are solving it for the application. So you need to know the context of what is the application design looks like, what's the application architecture looks like. So considering all those design documents as well, when you're generating a response to book, that can be very beneficial. Um, so let me shift the gears a little bit into the technical side. Uh, you might have seen this uh, slide in one of the previous sessions, but if not, I would just would like to quickly go over this. Um, so um, AWS has uh, a different level of tools in which you can apply generative AI technologies. At the top, we have some of the services which provides out of the box uh, generative AI capabilities with uh, backed by Amazon Q. Then we have uh, Amazon Bedrock, which exactly is the service that I'll be using in the next slide. And you know, talking a little bit about how it can help you to uh, provide API access uh, to the foundation models. And then we have the core infrastructure. So for the teams who have uh, much more advanced use cases, they need that level of fine tuning, customization, and model training, they can leverage the power of core compute and uh, implement those kind of use cases. Um, like I said, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Bedrock because that's the, one of the key services that I'll be using in the architecture later. Um, Amazon Bedrock provides the API level access to the, to the different foundation models, be it uh, for image processing, be it for text processing, and it can also integrate with your knowledge base. So when I say knowledge base, this basically means your organization documents, your AWS documentations, or if you integrate with any of the third party, their documentation. So that together brings the knowledge base. And when you are asking a question or when you are trying to use a, a foundation model, you want that to know what exactly do you mean from that knowledge base. So um, let me uh, talk a little bit about the technical aspect of this solution, the architecture. So first we'll start with Security Hub. So Security Hub helps you to provide like a centralized, uh, comprehensive view of what are the different findings that are happening, uh, what are the different security findings that are happening in your AWS environment as it automatically checks against the best practices. As soon as the finding is generated, so give you an example, uh, 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 EBS volume is not encrypted. That's a one, one of the example, right? So when that happens, it generates an event, and you can integrate that event with event bridge to trigger a Lambda function. This Lambda function, basically, it's your custom code, right? So you can decide what exactly do you want to do when that finding occurs. Then we have the knowledge base. I'm going to be talking about Bedrock a little later, but first let me talk about the knowledge base. So the knowledge base is basically your documentations, your application design documentation, some template samples, uh, AWS documentations, third party documentations, right? So all of them are together passed to Amazon Kendra, which provides the indexing and search capabilities on, on top of those. You pass that to Bedrock so that it knows that I don't want to give a generic answer. I want to give an answer which is coming from those documentations. So it's not like just go to, you know, just do X, Y, Z, but it is very specific to how you want to solve that particular issue. Once you get the response after that, you have the response runbook. And I'll be showing you in the example so that it will be much clearer. Uh, there is one more aspect, how you can extend this architecture in your real life. So as we all know, there are different and sometimes a lot of security findings that get generated. But there can be few which are very, very important for you and you want to tackle them as soon as possible. So you can here, you can apply necessary filters to only select specific category, for example, critical or high category, because that's more urgent to solve them. 
uh, once you generate the response run book, you just don't want to just put it into an S3 bucket and be with it, right? You want to make sure that someone addresses that, someone go over that and make the changes to resolve those findings. So you can have uh, an integration where you can assign that as a task, uh, you can notify in an email or in your channels or even create like a ticket in your ITSM tool. So uh, I know that was a little bit theoretical, but let's, uh, let me show you like how exactly it would work in a real life example. So you might have seen this before. This is a snapshot of Security Hub, the dashboard where you will see all the findings. You will have different, different level of findings based on the severity. And there is one particular finding that I'll be using as an example for the rest of the step, which is the EBS default encryption should be enabled. So I'm going to take that and uh, show you like how exactly the runbook is created to mitigate that. This is a runbook sample. It's very generic. Any company can follow it. It's basically what the template is about. What are the different sections that uh, that a company follows to uh, you know to create those runbooks? It basically has uh, incident type, incident description, the response process. First, what all different things you want to do? Gather the evidence, find the sensitivity, go to your application team and verify the changes, test it in lower environment, uh, record the history, make the changes, do after root cause analysis, right? So all those things. But just notice one thing: this is all blank because it's not populated. It's a blank template that I'll be passing uh, to, the, to the architecture. Um, so when I talked about knowledge base, uh, this is exactly what uh, a list of knowledge base documents it would look like. The very first that I added was AWS documentations, because since I'm solving a finding for EBS, I want to make sure that I pass all the EC2 related or EBS related documentations to, to, the, to the architecture so that it knows where to find what information. Then I passed some documentations from my application design documents. This design documentation can be, you know, uh, what you need to do for a web application versus what you need to do for a reporting application. You can pass the whole set of documents because it will have the power to find out which is the right one. Then I passed some of the templates. So the, the template that I showed you before, I exactly passed that as is to Kendra as well, so that it knows that I want a response runbook in this particular template only. Because that's something that my teams are comfortable with. This is a practice that our organization follows. Um, so when we work with Amazon Bedrock or any of the foundation models, you need to pass a prompt. You need to ask, or you need to provide the context, what exactly do you want the LLM or the foundation model to do? So this is one of the examples that I asked in the architecture that I mentioned before. Uh, I'm saying that I am, uh, as a security cloud security engineer, you have been given the following finding. This is a JSON finding from the security hub snapshot that I just showed you. It basically says uh, EBS, EBS default uh, encryption is not enabled. These are the details. And what I'm telling it to do is you need to create a runbook for this finding that is in alignment with your organization language format. Generate a runbook for this finding and use the template as a context as an example. So the template is the blank template that I provide. So let's see what happens. So as soon as uh, the finding is created, as soon as uh, Bedrock generates the output uh, based on the Lambda function, it populates your template with adding more information. So whatever sections which were incomplete before, it was basically blank, all those sections are now populated and it has the relevant details. It has the detail about incident type, the description, how exactly you can you know, capture the evidence. It also has the instructions how you can make the changes or you can perform step-by-step -step instructions. So if you see the section here, the section four, this is exactly coming from AWS documentations. Like what are the steps you need to do to enable that default level encryption? So, uh, and obviously you have the rest of the steps uh, also populated which is, what are the things you need to do? What are the uh, what are the set uh, set of actions that you need to do to capture that history, capture their actions, and also perform uh, post activity analysis? Uh, you might want to do a little bit more <laughs> here because uh, there is one thing that is uh, conf confirm the changes with respective application teams, right? So obviously uh, the 
uh, when you pass uh, like a application metadata to you know to, to the bedrock foundation models it can also know that which application is responsible for which kind of you know activities so you can also use some of those tags and create much more customized uh, uh, list of steps that you want the security professional to do uh, that's the real <laughs> example that i want to talk about uh, we are almost at time, so I would like to wrap up the discussion and uh, uh, consider some of the next, step, uh, next steps that, uh, that you can implement in your organization. First and foremost, I would encourage you to the possibilities of integrated generative AI in your, uh, in your existing processes. Like I said, it is not just for creating chatbots, it is not just for data science teams who are much more comfortable with machine learning and other things. It can impact uh, a different set of teams and you know make their lives much more easier uh, I know we still have some time for the rest of the conference so I would really encourage all of you to you know upskill yourself and uh, take advantage of all the different AI related capabilities that you know we are talking about in the next of the sessions uh, I with that this is my time uh, thank you so much for joining this session here are my details and I would love to connect with all of you uh, in LinkedIn so thank you